I'm a vision keeper. Yes, sir. Yes, and I am. I'm, proud to be. I'm so proud. I'm so proud to be a vision keeper. Hey, hey. Well, hello. God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I pray that you're having a God first day. Hey, 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 I'm a vision keeper. Praise the Lord. What am I so excited about today? Well, tonight, our vision keepers conference began, and it is our in-house uh, leadership conference. We have an annual leadership conference in-house, strengthening the leaders of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ annually. My second assistant, Elder Anthony Maurice Wilson, is the chairman of this. He's the president of our Vision Keepers Conference. And this year, our theme is influence. And we are so excited about what God is going to do uh, tonight and, uh, and, and Friday. Uh, tonight and Saturday and Sunday. I think we're skipping Friday and uh, Saturday and Sunday. We're going to put the, we're going to put everything on the screen where you can see it. I'm so excited. I'm messing up on telling you when we're going to do the thing. But I'm telling you, it's going to be wonderful. And even though it is a Vision Keepers leadership in-house conference, we invite everyone. We want all of the the members and the saints and the friend and our friends to come out tonight and be a part of the teaching. God has given me uh, a, a message that I think is going to be a blessing uh, to the body of Christ. And I want you to tune in tonight and, uh, and partake uh, in our 2022 Vision Keepers Leadership Conference. Our word is, we're, we're talking about influence and we're dealing with triumphant together. Uh, you know, the theme that God has given me for the year uh, the, 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 is the word triumph uh, from 2 uh, Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 14, where the Bible says, now thanks be unto God who always, with the emphasis on always, causeth us to triumph in Christ Jesus. So I'm excited about what God is doing. And speaking of uh, a triumph, you know, you know that we prayed, we prayed uh, a few years ago when, when my mother was at the point of death and I asked God to raise my mother up and the Lord did just that, put her back on her feet. Mom's doing great and uh, I just celebrate uh, uh, every day. It seemed like to me God is just blessing that woman of God. Well, listen, I have something that I want you to go out on iTunes, go to Apple and and download, this is her latest project. Yes, my mother, Gwendolyn uh, Ingram Ellison. And the name of this project is Plenty Good Room. And that's Plenty Good Room, she says, in the church of God. Come, up, come in and lay your burdens down. And this CD will bless you. Uh, listen, it's good old church music. And if you like church music, praise the Lord and with a strong, solid message. It's not designed to make you, uh, to depress you, but to keep you looking up and to remind you that Jesus is coming. And we're thanking the Lord for being so good. And uh, uh, I tell you, uh, and there's a song on there called, Here Am I, Send Me, uh, quoting the mighty prophet Isaiah. When you hear, Here Am I, Send Me, I tell you, it, make, it fires you up and make you want to go where the Lord would have you to go and do what the Lord would have you to do. And say, God, here I am, send me, use me. I want to be an instrument in the hands of the God of the Bible in these last days, these here last days. <laughs> now, you know, last week, last week, I was just getting back last Thursday, one week ago from the Acts 6 and 4 conference out there in Texarkana, Texas with prophet uh, evangelist Jason Stidham. What a mighty man of God, Brother Stidham is. And I was out there with some of the most powerful saints of God that I've ever been around. And uh, we were 
It was just good to be around a bunch of like-minded people. And many of you were concerned because with some of the footage and stuff, you noticed that we were out there in that uh, uh, Texarkana Convention Center. Oh, packed in like sardines. And oh, we were there and we were having church and uh, we were not socially distanced and uh, no one had on masks and uh, there was no um, hand sanitizer giving out or anything like that. And by the way, Brother Wooden is not against any of these things. But I was not in charge of the uh the convention, I was an invited guest. And you saw the footage. You saw that I preached. You saw that we worshiped. You saw that we lay hands on people. And friends, out of concern, said, God, I pray that he doesn't get the, uh, uh, COVID. Enemies was hoping that we would. Well, here I am a week later. Praise God. Stronger than ever. Ever fired up. God kept us. And the Lord watched over the conference. God used the saints of God there. And let me tell you, my point is not, my point is not don't practice the protocol. My point is not, not do things for safety. But my point is change your attitude. Check your mind. Stop living under the Fear of the uh, uh, and 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 uh, of the, this virus and every you you you're hanging on to every word, every word that comes from the CDC, every word that come out of the mouth of Tony Fauci, every word that come from the uh, the government. The Bible teaches that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And let me tell you something. I still believe that. I believe that the God of the Bible is in charge. I believe that God is our keeper and that our life and times are in the hand of the Lord. And I think that we should do everything that we can possible to be safe. But you know what COVID is just like? COVID is like everything else. Uh, cancer exists. Flu High blood pressure, t uh, tuberculosis. You know, when I start naming the ailments that can affect the human body, there are so many that I don't have time and I can't recall all of them. Kidney disease, you name it. Uh, di diabetes, you, you know, all these things. These things exist. But you know what? We find a way to trust God and to live on and to carry on in the name of uh, the Lord. And I want to say, brothers and sisters, let's carry on in the name of the Lord. Yes, the virus, you notice, Brother Wooden has never changed his talk concerning this virus. I've never de denied it, its existence. I've never said that it's not real. I've never pretended that people can't uh, catch it because you can I said to you, and I say again, the virus is in the world. We live in the world. So anything that takes place in the world, you know, like things like hot, cold, <laughs> wet, dry, things that happen in the world that happen, that affect everyone else, affects the saints also. But the response to these things is, uh, is what makes the difference. And the Christian ought to respond by obeying the word of God. The Christian ought to respond with a thus saith the Lord. The Christian ought to respond di uh, displaying that peace which passeth all understanding. This is not the first time that Christians have been sick. From what I understand... Throughout his career, the Apostle Paul had to contend with sickness. He had to contend with a frail body. As a matter of fact, his images, uh, his enemies tried to make fun of him and say, you know, when he's in person, he's frail, he's little, he's sickly. But when he writes letters, he's big and he's bold. Yes, even the mighty Apostle Paul had to deal with affliction. As a matter of fact, he said himself, the less he would be be exalted above measure, he was afflicted. And yet, and yet that man, that mighty man of God, when I meet him in heaven, I want to shake his hand and hug him. 
wrote 14 of the 26 books of the New Testament, if you believe that he also penned the book of Hebrews, and look at the work that he did, even though he had to contend with physical sickness and ailments. And by the way, Garrett, with the physical sicknesses and ailments, that's not the way his life ended. They put him to death. He was beheaded. He pressed on and pressed through. Now, I want to say to the believers out there, praise God, let's, let us learn. The Bible says that all these things were done for our examples. Saints have pressed their way through a multitude of things. We've had greater enemies than this. Um, there have been times, you know, uh, we're not the first, and I got to wrap this up because I'm excited about tonight, but we're not the first, the, the first to be uh, shut down by the government. We're not the first to have danger and the enemy come against the church. Uh, when the children of Israel were released to go back up to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple, they got there, they got started, they were happy at everything. And the people who lived there sided with, uh, joined with the government. And they wrote an edict, or Artaxerxes stopped the, con the construction of the temple. And do you know how the, 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 the saints, the Jews, the returnees responded to the resistance? You know, read your Bible. You know what they did? They changed their doctrine. They begin to preach, oh, it's not time to build God's house. It's not time to build God's house. Never mind the fact that they were released to build God's house. God says it's because you have built your sealed houses. You went on and done other things. You can go elsewhere. You can go to the grocery store. You can go to the ball game. You can go to the racetrack. You can go here. You can go there. You can go to the club, to the vape house, to the crack house. You name it. We can do all those things. Uh, 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 AGs, uh, uh, these uh, uh, George Soros appointed attorneys are announcing uh, in cities that they no longer will charge for sex crimes. So the prostitute can go on and prostitute and the John can still go, go buy the prostitute. We can do all that. But, the, but the, the, the Christians have changed their doctrine. Now, it's a shame. You, you have tried to come up with a new religion, a new theology that allows you to do the very thing that the Bible says that we're not to do in the last days. And that is we're, we're not to forsake the assemblings of ourselves together. Hebrews 10 and 25. And we're doing it and we're trying to justify it. Listen, listen, I want to say to every man of God, every child of God out there, listen, the virus is real. It's in the world. If you get it, go home, stay home. And the Lord's going to bless you. He's going to heal you. He's going to put you back on your feet. And when you get healed and you're back on your feet and you've gone through the quarantine, well, there's 10 days or five. I wonder if they're going to change it again. They keep changing these things every 30 days, every 15 days, sometimes every two. Listen. When you get well, come on back to the house of God. But people should have a house of God to attend. So I'm talking to the preachers out there. Man, open your church. Preach the word of God. If you get sick, you get it. Praise the Lord. You do the same thing. You go down. I've said here, if something happens to me, hey, let's carry on till I get back. Praise God, because I'm coming back unless the Lord takes me to heaven. And if God take, takes me to heaven, then y'all can have it. And I hope that uh, the next man up, because I still, I, you know, I used to play sports. I believe that next man up mentality. One man goes down, another man steps up. One man goes down, another man steps up. One lady goes down, another lady steps up. We continue, we continue, we endure until the end. We fight the good fight of faith. So I want to invite you tonight. I am fired up. I hope I'm not talking too fast. I hope that I'm not. Let me calm down. Whew. Glory. Because God's doing great things. My spiritual mother, I have, I have a petition up before God the, the, uh, that God would just touch her. Praise the Lord, Mother Willa Dean Turner, and all who knows the words of prayer, pray that God would just touch her and heal her body. And no, it's not COVID related. I, I got news for you. There are other things other than COVID that people have to contend with. But God is doing a mighty work. We love her and we thank God. God for her. And saints, I thank God for every one of you. And tonight, we're going to have a, a time in the Lord. So I want to invite you to join me tonight for 
Bible study. <laughs> yes, we're going to study the word of the Lord together, even though we are in our 2022 Vision Keepers Leadership Conference. Hey, 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 I'm a vision keeper. Yes, sir. Yes, I am. I'm so proud. I'm so proud to be a vision keeper. Hey.